video, but I am finally going to be reading Akatar, and I'm so excited. At this point, it feels impossible that I haven't read this because I've had the entire series for over a year now, and the series and Sarah J Mass, I feel like are just one of the most popular set of books ever, and I have just been making excuses as to why I could not pick up this book until today. And I have managed to stay away from most spoilers. I will say I'm upset that I have for a really long time known one big spoiler of something that happens, I guess, in book two. I don't want to say what it is because I want this video to be spoiler free and then I'll probably do like a spoiler section at the end. I also don't know a whole lot about the plot of the book. I know that it follows Feyre and that there are Faye and the Bat Boys and she's an archer and I think she like kills a wolf or something and then her whole life changes. That's kind of all that I know. I normally like to go into books as blind as I can, especially fantasy. I just feel like it's fun to know as little as possible. So I'm glad that I don't know much more than that. Like I said, I bought this a year ago and I did read the first chapter because I try and make sure I at least like the author's writing on a basic level before I buy books. And I remember thinking, okay, I think I'm gonna eat this up just as much as everybody else. But then there have been a couple of books this year that have made me a little scared that maybe I won't love this as much as everyone else. Particularly one fantasy romance that everybody is loving that I went into with the highest of hopes and absolutely hated. And that scared me because I was like, hmm, these are the same girlies that are saying they love Akatar. So if they love Akatar, maybe I won't love Akatar. I don't want to say what book that was because I don't want people to get upset with me. But I will say that I read Fourth Wing recently and I was scared for the same reasons, but I actually did like it. So that has restored my faith a little bit that I will still really enjoy this. I think regardless, I'm gonna like it, but will I love it? I guess we'll just have to see. It is Sunday night and it's already 10.30, so I don't have a whole lot of time to dig into this. So I just want to stop talking and start reading. It's now officially day two of reading Akatar, and I don't have like a ton of updates yet, but this is my first time doing a reading vlog centered around one book. So I feel like I have to give you more updates than I normally would. Last night I did indeed get, I think 20 pages in before I fell asleep. And I'm now on chapter seven, which is page 58. So we are making some progress. I think I'm like 15% of the way through. But now it's only 8.20 and I really want to get back into it. So I think I'm going to paint my nails and read. So far I am not like super into it but I am intrigued and I am wanting to read more. I'm wanting to get to the point where I get hooked so I'm hoping that that happens pretty soon. I wish that I didn't know about the spoiler that I talked about earlier just so that I could experience it for myself, go through the emotions and everything like as I'm supposed to instead of knowing what's gonna happen. But it is what it is. I'm glad at least that I don't have any other spoilers for later on in the book. I feel like this isn't like that big of a thing, but I don't really know, I guess it could be. Right now there is a certain someone whose name we don't know yet and I'm assuming he is who I think he is. I feel like it is really hard to give you updates without being spoilery. I'm only a little bit in, so I don't really have much to talk about anyways. So I'm gonna go paint my nails and see how much more I can read tonight. didn't get my reaction on camera, but something just happened on page 94. Literally not anything that big. But when I read it, I was like, what? <laughs> what is happening here, babes? Obviously I'm still not very far in. So things are like a little bit slow, but they're not boring at all. And what just happened at the end of the chapter? I'm like, huh, how is this gonna go down? So I'm hoping that maybe something picks up a little bit. I'm just intrigued. Not something I expected. 
that's all I had to share. So now I'm gonna see what happens. Also, in case anyone's wondering, I normally have to set timers for myself to make sure that I don't fall asleep. They don't really work because usually I'll fall asleep, set a new timer, fall asleep, set a new timer, and that will go on like five times. But I'm starting to really enjoy this and I wanna get as much done as possible tonight. So I'm for sure setting timers and I am not gonna fall asleep. I'm nervous, what is gonna happen here? I don't believe this is real. Like how can this be real? Yeah, I knew it. forget about me? Actually, no, I'm the one that forgot about you. You just saw me a second ago, but I don't know the last time that I spoke to the camera. This reading vlog has not gone exactly how I planned, not because there's anything wrong with the book, but just because I didn't pick a good week to do this. I picked a pretty busy week and a really busy weekend. It's now Thursday. I honestly do not remember what day I started this, but I think it's been over a week. Oh, there's something in my eye. I know, that was unexpected. The lighting in this clip is terrible, so you probably can't see. Honestly though, I should fix the lighting. Is that better? Now that an eyelash just jumped into my eyeball, I was trying to explain that I have not read much of Akatar and I don't think I've updated y'all since before the weekend and it's now Thursday. So here's the update. I have not really been reading at home at all. I finally started building this book nook that I've had for like six months and it has been taking up all of my attention. I'll show you a picture somewhere of what the progress looks like right now. I have just been leaning over our coffee table working on this little tiny book nook. My little fingertips hurt from pressing all those tiny pieces together and my back is screaming from bending over the table like that so much. I have already spent probably three hours working on it today, but I've decided to cut it off. I don't need my back or my fingers to hurt anymore and I have got to finish this book and this vlog. The good news is that my work has for some reason been really slow. So I have been bringing my book and reading a little bit during lunch. And then if it's slow reading just like a little here and there. Actually, I did not have my book with me yesterday, but I was so bored and I wanted to read. So I looked to see if I could listen to it on Spotify and it's not free on there. It's not on Kindle Unlimited. And finally I caved and I paid, I think like eight or $9 to get it on my Kindle on my phone, which normally I would never pay that to have it on my Kindle when I already have a physical copy, but now that I have it, it's really nice to be able to read it on my Kindle. So where am I and how am I feeling? I'm on page 249 and it says I'm 59% in. So let's update this here. Okay, so I'm on chapter 28 and I am this far in. It feels good to only have less than half left. As for my thoughts, I'm enjoying it. I feel like the last two days while I was reading here and there at work, things started to really pick up a bit. It still feels like there's nothing big going on. Okay, and this is not a spoiler because it's on the back of the book, but there's something going on in the fairy world. Something is not quite right. So right now that feels like really the only conflict that's going on. So I feel like so far it's kind of just been vibes, but it feels like things are just about to pick up and hopefully things will be a little bit more fast paced for the rest of the book. And I'm assuming that it has a really good cliffhanger or something at the end. I've heard that all of Sarah J Mass books have like a crazy ending. So I'm excited to actually sit down and hopefully get a good chunk of reading done all at once. I feel like the fact that it's already taken me a week to read this is only hurting the book. I think that my ratings and the way that I experience the book are just always better if I read them in a short sitting. So who knows, maybe I can knock all of this out tonight, but I don't have too high of hopes. I'm probably gonna fall asleep before then. Everybody hates Nesta and I don't love her, but I'm starting to like her more. It seems like things are finally gonna happen. They are going to pick up. Stop that. Staying awake. Left on your 20 minute timer. 
I don't know if I can make it. Alexa, stop. So at this point, we all know that I've been doing a really bad job at this vlog. I looked on Goodreads and I think I've been reading this for at least two weeks now, which is crazy. And I am 74% into the book, which is what page? Page 316. Chapter 36, so I only have about 100 pages left. So I really want to just sit down and knock it out and finally finish this. This vlog did not go at all how I expected and I feel like honestly, I have kind of done this book a disservice because I've taken so long to read it. And that's not because I don't think that the book is good. It's just because I've had kind of a more busy time than I thought. And I've only been sitting down to read this book at night. And as you can probably see, I just, I have a problem where I cannot stay awake and it usually has nothing to do with the book. Sometimes if I'm reading like a really intense mystery thriller or something like that, I can get myself to stay up. Like I don't feel tired because I've got like adrenaline and stuff going through me, I guess. But usually I have no say whatsoever on if I'm gonna stay awake. I just can't do it. So for the most part, I have picked this book up and only read like between 10 to 30 pages at a time because I'm picking it up at night and it doesn't really matter if it's eight o'clock or if it's midnight. If it's nighttime and I'm sitting down and not moving, I'm gonna fall asleep. With all that being said, I guess I'm not loving the book as much as I expected to, but then again, I know that people say that the first one isn't the best, like it just only gets better from here. And I feel like where I am right now, we are finally going to get some action. I feel like I've been saying that for a while, but Feyre, our main character, is finally going to be in some actual action. Anytime that I have the chance to sit down and read a book within like two or three days, then my rating is usually a lot higher, my enjoyment is higher, just because I get that high of like reading it all at once. And even though I only have 100 pages left, I feel like that is enough to where if I can sit down and read a lot of it, then as long as I'm enjoying what happens in these last 100 pages, it could really turn things around for me. I just feel bad. I know that I should have read this much quicker and I know I have not been doing a very good job with this vlog, but it's kind of hard giving updates when I'm trying to make this spoiler free up until the end. Hopefully the next time I talk to you is once I finish the book. I like in picture, you know in Spongebob when there's that giant worm that's like eating the town or something? It's just a giant pink pale worm. I have that in my brain right now. I bet I know the one person who voted that she'd win. Excuse me, sir, what are you doing here? I knew it was him. Um, excuse me? Okay, I really hate her saying my high lord. Does that bother anybody else? I don't know why, but I really just don't like it. My high lord. Uh, I did not expect that from you, mister. <laughs> That's funny though. Girl, that is half a month. What do you mean just two weeks? Feyre, darling. <laughs> I don't like my belongings being tampered with. What is happening here? Again, with the watery bowels. I knew that she liked to use that phrase because I've seen people talk about it, but what is up with her and the watery bowels? She can't read. <laughs> that is so stupid. It was like Tamlin and me, just two people. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, I didn't know that was possible. Ew, <laughs> what is happening? I'm feeling confused. I feel like the way that I thought this was gonna end is maybe not correct. <sighs> I just know she's not gonna do it. <gasps> oh? <laughs> Why did I not guess that? Oh. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. What? Uh, since when is that possible? Hmm. I've been sitting down here for hours. It's time to sit up. So the moment we've all been waiting for is here. I have finally finished Akatar. Literally nobody's been waiting for that. It's just me, but I have some thoughts and I want to do a quick spoiler free section and then I'll go into a little bit more details and I will warn you when it's getting into spoiler territory. I am super glad that I just sat here and read the last 100 pages in one sitting instead of letting this go on for like another week because like I said, I just feel like I'm going to enjoy a book much more when I do that. 
and I did enjoy the last 100 pages. Like I said, I did also enjoy the beginning of the book, just kind of setting up the world a little bit. There's not really a whole lot of world building and I don't feel like there's really a magic system that you have to learn or anything. So it's really easy to just get into the world, but just like describing it and all of that, I feel like it was just pretty and it was nice. But the second half is where it picked up a little bit and there were higher stakes, which was fun. I feel like the writing is really easy to get into. Like I said, there's not a whole lot of world building or that stuff that you kind of expect when going into a new fantasy series. So I feel like this would really be good for somebody who's wanting to get started with fantasy. I feel like people recommend this for that reason all the time and I agree. I liked a lot of our characters and I did like Feyre, our main character, which is good. That's always very important. After finishing the book, I don't feel like the strong urge to immediately start book two, which is honestly good because I do not have time to start continuing the series this month. I have too much stuff on my TBR that I have to take care of. It feels kind of like Fourth Wing where I finished it and I was like, oh, that was fun. I want to read the next one, but like not right now. So I feel like that's kind of all I have to say for the non-spoiler section. I think that if you haven't read this yet and you've been kind of on the fence, or you're thinking that it could be good for your first fantasy book, I do recommend it. I think that if you are super like into fantasy, especially like high epic fantasies, then this might be a little bit too simple for you and you might not enjoy it, especially if you do not like fantasy romance because in this book, the romance is very heavy. And I know that that's how the series continues. Like it's very heavy on the romance throughout, I've heard. And I've also heard that it gets very spicy. This first one wasn't very spicy, but like the next one I think is really a lot more spicy. So if that is not your thing, I would keep that in mind. But yeah, I'm glad that I finally read it, my first Sarah J Mass book. If I had to give it a rating right now, I'm sitting between like a 3.5 to a four stars, which is lower than I was hoping it would be. But I have high hopes that the series is going to get a lot better from here. And anything that's a three star or above means that I enjoyed it and would probably recommend it. So that's not a bad rating. I just was hoping that it was going to be more of like a four to a five. Now I'm going to get into the spoiler part. So if you don't want any spoilers, then thank you for watching. Now is your time to click off because we are going to start that now. Okay. I feel like I don't have a whole lot to discuss here, but there are definitely some key points I wanted to talk about. First, I'm sure you knew when I said at the beginning that I have had one major plot point spoiled for me that everybody just acts like it's common knowledge. And that is of course the fact that Tamlin is our love interest in book one. And then I think starting next book, it is Resand, and I probably said his name wrong. So please don't hate me if I did. But I think that everybody actually hates Tamlin and then Resand becomes our love interest. And everybody just talks about it as if it's fine to just spoil that part for everybody. And I feel like maybe we shouldn't be doing that just because it would obviously be more fun as somebody who's going into it blind, like everyone else got to when the series was just coming out being like, oh, Tamlin, blah, 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 blah. And then be like, oh, what's happening here? You know what I mean? But the whole time I was reading and she's obsessed with Tamlin and I was like, girl, I just know he's gonna do something. Everybody hates him. So it was hard for me to kind of try and enjoy, I guess, the moments between the two of them. Not even just enjoying it, but it was hard to get into the story because I was like, well, I know that this is not gonna work out. But I am a little bit confused because towards the end of this book, when she is under the mountain with Amarantha, what's her name? Amarantha, yeah. Resand starts coming into her cell and doing all these things. And I was like, okay, it's very obvious that there's going to be at least a love triangle or something between the three of them. Like he's obviously gonna be a big part of the book. So I guess I was confused because I thought that everybody loved Tamlin when this first book came out. And at the end of the book, like they were getting tattoos of him. They were so obsessed with him. And then what happened in the second book was like a shock. So I don't know why I thought that. Maybe that's not what happened. But I was kind of shocked because I was like, well, to me, it's pretty obvious that Reese is like kind of a good guy and that he likes her. I also got another small spoiler on TikTok recently because people just put spoilers out and do not give any warnings or anything. And it's so annoying. Not that it was a huge spoiler or anything, but it was about the trials, which I didn't know that the trials were a thing until I saw this. It was something along the lines of Lucien is freaking out because Farrah can't read the words for the trial and he's like gonna die. So when I sat down today, I'm pretty sure I wasn't at the point like where I was supposed to know that the trials were a thing yet, but I knew that they were gonna happen. More about Tamlin, I guess. I just don't really love him. Like he's really nice, all this, but then finding out that he has been trying to break the curse this whole time. And so he obviously knew that Pharaoh was his only option to have her fall in love with him. I was like, oh, like once Pharaoh found out about that, I was like, how are you not seeing him in a totally different light? Like he is using you. So that didn't sit well with me. So I'm interested to see what happens in book two that makes people not like him anymore. 
Tell me why I was so shocked that Tamlin was the third fairy out of the hood. Like I should have seen that coming, but I was so shocked. I thought it was gonna be her dad or something. Also her becoming high fae, uh, I had no idea that that was possible. I just thought that they were bringing her back to life. I did not think she was gonna turn into a fairy, but I'm here for it. And I think it's gonna make the series much more interesting in the next few books. I'm also excited to see what happens with her and Reese. Obviously she has this deal with him that she has to stay with him every month, like a week out of every month. I'm excited to just hear about the night court because everybody talks about oh, the night court, the night court, it's so beautiful, blah, 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 blah. So I'm excited, my hopes are high. I hope that it is like really beautiful and fun to read about. And yeah, I honestly do not know anything else that happens plot wise after this book. I didn't know anything about the plot actually in this first book, other than the fact that Tamlin is the love interest and then it turns to Reese. All I know is that the last book is about her sister Nesta. So obviously I'm guessing both of her sisters come to live in the fairy world and they become just much more involved. I'm sure that they each begin romances with fairies. Maybe they both turn into fairies, I don't know. But I'm excited to see just where the plot takes us because now Amarantha is gone or at least we think she's gone. She was our only real like bad guy. So I'm interested to see where the plot is gonna go now. I think that's enough. I've been talking for a while now and my biggest takeaway is just that I did enjoy it. I wish I didn't spread it out among two weeks. Not that that was a voluntary choice, but I, I think that I would have enjoyed it if I read it over the course of just a few days. So I'm really gonna try and do that for the next couple books in the series. I'm gonna try and only start them when I know I have time to kind of devour them in like one or two sittings. That was a lie, I can't do it in one sitting. Two to three sittings. Like I said, 3.5 to four stars is where I'm sitting at right now, but it definitely has potential for the series itself to become a five star. Just because the first book isn't amazing doesn't mean that I won't love the rest of them. That's all for me. I hope that this was maybe fun to watch. I think if I had a favorite book series, it would be fun, but also terrifying to watch someone read it. If you have, I would love to know what your favorite book in the series was. I know most people love the next one, I think. So I have really high hopes for it, but I would love to know the general consensus. Like is the second really the best book or do other people have different favorites? Hopefully I will be completing the series sometime in early 2024. And if I do, then you will obviously be hearing my thoughts in wrap ups. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.